Hi, I'm Paris Barclay, director of award-winning film and television. Now, I create scripted realities every day, usually with happy endings. In real life, it's not so easy to handle the drama. If you are experiencing excessive hostility, feel alone, depressed, or just need someone to listen, there are people who want to help. Let's create a culture of kindness, bravery, and empowerment. Reach out, connect, and create a better community. For more information, call the LA County Department of Mental Health's Access Line at 1-800-854-7771. When I was a child, the thing that I really discovered was I needed something to improve how I felt. And the first thing that I got um, was candy. Uh, I became obsessed with the candy store. And as I look back on it now and as I've talked to, you know, shrinks and various highly trained professionals, they say that was probably an early sign that you wanted to adjust the way that you felt somehow. I'm Paris Barclay, I'm a producer and a director. I uh, have directed shows like NYPD Blue and ER and The West Wing, and more recently, shows like Glee and Sons of Anarchy and In Treatment. Um, I also produce shows for television, and occasionally I write. By the time I actually got to um, middle school, I was already um, sort of pegged as an underachiever. So eventually, I was sent to a private boarding school in Indiana called the Lallemere School, which is I was the first black student there, one of a hundred students. It actually was one of the places where I learned to drink, because a lot of those prep school kids, they would come, I mean, they would unpack you know, all their socks with the monograms and blenders. Then, and, you know, they say, when do you cross the invisible line? I think I can tell you that I know exactly what it was. It was in 1976, I was at Harvard, I was in the middle of a show that I had written, and I got a call from my mother that my brother had been killed. And I remember coming downstairs in my dorm, and a friend of mine's mother was there because they were visiting for the show that he had helped co-create. Uh, co and they said, let's go to a bar. When you're really having some sort of tragic, painful time, I found out that the application of alcohol helped you forget about it. It helped you, for the time being, just put it away. I went to New York and I went into advertising and I drank my way through for 10 years. Cocaine got involved because advertising was also at that time fueled by cocaine. I remember very vividly I'm um, watching television and just at that time, and this is a true story, a commercial came on and it said, do you have a problem with cocaine? I do remember talking for 20 minutes to this person on the phone and crying and sobbing and telling them I wanted to kill myself and telling them that I was incredibly depressed, which I was, and I thought I needed help. I went to um, Bob, who was my counselor, I guess, and Bob told me that this was my problem. He said, you have to accept the fact that your behavior over the past 10, 20 years has proven that you have a mental illness that you have to deal with. And I thought, okay, let me give it a try. Getting sober didn't make everything perfect for me. I thought, you know, my life isn't really working and it's not really worth it. And I became more and more depressed. And my depression became so great that the only thing I could think of was to kill myself. I decided that the way that I would kill myself is I would drive my rented Camaro off the uh, Pacific Coast Highway into the water. I think, you know, this is the time to just press the accelerator and go off the cliff and get into the water. And um, unfortunately for me, the song Bridge of Troubled Waters comes over on my um, radio. I mean, the lyrics of it were so um, perfect for this voice telling me what to do right now, which was that I will be taken care of and that there is something in the universe that can hold on to you. Must have been in some way talking about God's hand in people's lives. So I turned the car around and I got back on the highway and, you know, sort of reconnected and started reworking my, uh, my program of recovery. I was in treatment. I was, uh, I had a psychiatrist and I went to one person who was a specialist in the inner child and I decided that my inner child wasn't the problem, it's actually my outer child that was the problem <laughs> because I really had this, you know, I want, I grab, I need, I must have now. So I started reconnecting and, and over time I recovered from that downward spiral. And I do think when I'm in trouble, which is rare, I do know that there are people that I can call and I can talk to and I'm not shy about it, I'm really not. I don't want to be in a position where I'm on the cliff again. Without help, it's almost hopeless. Um, it is not a disease that people can cure themselves of. 
despite their best effort. It's just not possible. It's a mental illness, and as a mental illness, it needs to be treated. And maybe you're not digging out of the garbage cans, and you're not filthy dirty, and you're not begging in front of 7-Eleven, but you have an illness that needs to be treated. And so a lot of times I say that, you know, if it's really bad, look to a professional. You know, there's certainly options to do it. Look to a professional who can take care of you, because I was taken care of by professionals and very well. Without that, I doubt that I would be sitting here today. One of the things that you actually should look at is when circumstances might be depressing, it might be very natural for you to be depressed. You know, if your parent dies or if someone you love, you know, rejects you, those are things that can make you depressed. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are, you know, in a permanent depression that you will never get out of. You have circumstances that are sad and you're blue. It's okay, they pass. And that was startling to realize. So what's actually happened to me is I, I've recognized that sometimes things that you know, make me sad are things that are just natural downturns. So I met Christopher, who is now my husband, um, about 14 years ago, and we were together for a few years, and we'd always thought that it would be a great idea to have children, but we weren't actually ready to give up our freedom and our ability to make our own schedule. And I'd written a musical that was performing in Boston, and so we went to Boston to see the musical. In fact, my whole family came to Boston to see the musical. We were supposed to fly back on September 11th of 2001 from Boston to Los Angeles. Everyone thought we were actually on the flight that went into the first tower of the World Trade Center. And so immediately everyone's calling us, but we're back at home, we're back in our house, and we were safe. And we were watching, you know, with the incredible horror that all of us watched that on. And we thought for a second, what is this about? Is it to really continue to just, you know, you know, be together, or are we supposed to make some things happen for other people? We decided the most effective thing we could do is adopting children. And then as we researched it a little bit more, we discovered that in the foster care system, there were 35,000 kids at that time who needed to be adopted here in LA County. And when we went further into that, what we discovered is many of those children are dark-skinned and are not adopted because they're dark-skinned. And then I became furious. And I'm thinking, if my circumstances were different, I would still be in foster care. LA foster care system, they were, could not be greater. We took eight weeks of training, which was wonderful. And a couple months later, we were uh, blessed with our first child. It was seven days old. And then our second son came later. They eventually became our adopted sons. And uh, we got married. The secret of life is actually to go out and give as much as you possibly can. And when you're done, what you'll discover is that much has been returned to you um, and more than you ever imagined. I'm very active in politics. And so in terms of wellness and what I do, a lot of what I do has to do with participation in the choices we make in our government. I found a group of like-minded people who participate. And we sort of travel from issue to issue and cause to cause. I get a lot back from that. I get a lot back that I don't expect um, just by giving back. It's the more footwork you do, the more involved you are, the more you're on the front lines of change that is important to you, that uh, the more that things work out for you. I was told by a very, very famous filmmaker that um, when you actually become a director, part of what you do is you, you either recreate the family that you had or you recreate the family that you want. And in my case, I've always tried to recreate the family that I wanted, where everyone is respected, where collaboration is prized, where every voice can be heard and can contribute. And I've discovered that that works a lot better. That makes me more comfortable and people seem to perform better. It's astonishing how when people are actually respected in the work that they do, that they contribute a little something extra. To me, hope is the opposite of fear. I mean, to me, you have a real choice as to what, the, how are you going to approach your life. Are you going to approach your life being fearful and looking at, at everything as a possible downfall, thinking of the future as you know black as can be, or are you going to hope for the best options and the best opportunities? And I found that I live better and I wake up better and I sleep better, actually, when I think that the, the future will be positive, and if it's not, it'll be something I can deal with and something I can accept. You know, for me, um, today, the happiest I can be and the happiest days I have are just, you know, simple days that start, you know, 
trying to drag the kids out of bed, you know, making breakfast. I usually make pancakes on, on, on Saturday mornings. I found that the happiest times that I've spent now tend to be the simplest. I feel like I get refueled by the happiness of just being, you know, able to be a family and to be together.